the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins and ask for God's pardon. Lord Jesus, you transformed water into wine. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you transform us into God's holy people. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you shower us with the gifts of your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father, Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of the will. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of the will. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet. Until her vindication shines forth like the dawn, and her victory like a burning torch. Nations shall behold your vindication, and all the kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name, pronounced by the mouth of the Lord. You shall be a glorious crown in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem held by your God. No more shall people call you forsaken or your land desolate, but you shall be called 
my delight, and your land espoused. For the Lord delights in you and makes your land his spouse. As a young man marries a virgin, your builder shall marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, there are different type, kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. To one is given through the Spirit of expression of wisdom. To another, the expression of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by one Spirit. To another, mighty deeds. To another, prophecy. To another, discernment of spirits. To another, varieties of tongues. To another, interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit produces all of these. Distribute them individually to each person as he wishes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, how does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servers, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for Jewish ceremonial washings, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told them, Fill the, the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it. And when the head waiter tasted the water that had become wine without knowing where it had come from, although the servers who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter said, called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves good wine first, and then when people have drunk freely, an inferior one. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this as the beginning of his signs at Cana in Galilee, and so revealed his glory, and his disciples began, began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. So last week we were in the Christmas season. I came in here on Monday morning to open the safe for the counters, and I thought, something looks different. Something looks different. Can't put my finger on it. <laughs> Some of our guys had removed the, the trees um, on uh, Sunday afternoon, so God bless them. There were some big trees. Last week, we focused on a baptism, the baptism of the Lord. And that really wasn't about baptism. And this week, we focus on a wedding that's really not about marriage, at least between two people anyway. So both of these events, whether it is Jesus being baptized in the Jordan River or Jesus attending a wedding party, they're both about Jesus announcing the kingdom of God, that it's present. Jesus' baptism is about he, how he takes on our sinful humanity to his perfect humanity and gives us reconciliation through himself with God the Father. The wedding symbolizes the relationship between God and his people. If we look at the Old Testament from the book of Isaiah, we see that, the, not only the wedding banquet, but that God will provide for all his people. So in today's gospel reading from the Gospel of John, Jesus is the bridegroom, we are the bride. So John is composed in a number of signs. If you study John, that's the way it is. It's composed of a number of signs or miracles. And they all point to Jesus' identity as the Son of God. So the first sign we heard today, and that is the miracle at Cana. Jesus is the bridegroom. Jesus provides the best wine in great quantities. So when you look at the numbers that the gospel gives to us, the six stone wash, six huge jars full of 20 to 30 gallons each, it would be equivalent to 120, I did this, 120 boxes of Franzia. <laughs> or approximately 120 to 180 gallons of wine. So this is a sign of God's generosity and the abundance that he provides. Of course, it's much better wine. It's like I was telling the ushers this, this, uh, before Mass started that they just auctioned off four bottles of Glenfiddich um, f that was made in the 1950s for about just a little over a million dollars today. Yeah, so that type of quality. In the Old Testament, Israel is often portrayed as the bride. We see this imagery in the first reading today. But she is often not seen as a good bride. She is seen as unfaithful, sinful, and scandalous. God forgives her, though, over and over again, and he restores her. However, she can't help herself. 
She worships foreign gods, disobeys God's rules, and forgets over and over about her covenant with God. To quote Cindy Lauper, girls just want to have fun. So what does this mean for us? We are at the party. It's a good party, and it's for us. We are the bride. God is marrying us. It is the final and eternal banquet of the kingdom of God. So as we think of ourselves as one in the dress, the one who is getting married, the one who is being called to committed love with God, we can reassess our own fidelity to God. In a recent article that has really nothing to do with this topic, but gave me an idea, an article in the National Catholic Reporter about a deceased priest, um, Father Donald Cousins, who wrote a number of very influential books in the past 20 years on the priesthood. But this writer was making the point on him, talking about him because he recently died, that as human beings, we cannot commit the sin of atheism nor even agnosticism, that it's impossible for us as human beings, and I thought that was an interesting point. Rather, we commit the sin of idolatry, the first against the first commandment. We as spiritual beings can't help but give worship to something, and whenever that something is not God, we commit a sin against the first commandment, the sin of idolatry. So as it has been said, there is just really one commandment, but the other nine commandments are ways to reflect upon the first one, right? So there's just one. So God commits himself to us, and we are invited to return that love. In our prayer and reflection, we can think of how we commit the sin of idolatry. Instead of giving our love to God, we give it to something or someone else. And it's easy for us to find what we idolize. All we have to do is think of how we spend our money and time, right? Our credit card statement or our day planner will reveal what we devote the most of our life to, good or bad. So the first requirement that Jesus places on all his disciples, he says, leave what you have, follow me. So can we... if we put ourselves in the, in the shoes of the disciples, what would that mean for us? To leave everything behind. To not show up to work because you're following this very interesting itinerant preacher who invited you to follow him. The mark of true humility is to put God first in our lives. St. Teresa of Avila, yes, yeah, St. Teresa of Avila, called the last stage of spiritual development, spiritual matrimony to Jesus. So it ties well with the gospel reading. Christ dwells in us. He is the center of our being, and that is being married to Jesus. So this is why if we are living as a Christian, we will never lose our sense of joy. If we are not joyful, and it's not from a chemical imbalance in our brain, we have lost our way in some way. We are placing our trust and our hope in something that is not God. And we know from St. Augustine that if we put our hope and trust in anything that is not God, we will be led to disappointment and possibly even despair because it will let us down. So our job as Christians is to keep on our wedding garments, or, or which would be the same thing as our baptismal garment. We are invited and belong at the wedding feast of Jesus, where he is the groom, and we as the church are the bride. We now stand, we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. 
For our sake, who was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God, who rejoices in us as a bride and a groom, uh, rejoice in each other, we give voice to our needs and the needs of the world. For the church during this week of prayer for Christian unity, that we may look to Christ to guide us to greater holiness on a common path with our baptized brothers and sisters, we pray to the Lord. For leaders of nations, that they may support religious tolerance so that all of, of their people may worship freely, we pray to the Lord. By, that inspired by the model of Dr. Martin Luther King, all citizens of this nation may work to fight injustice anywhere, we pray to the Lord. And for those who are preparing for marriage, that they may be a sign of the love that God has for us all, we pray to the Lord. Loving God, you sent your Holy Spirit to us, who continually blesses us with gifts, gifts that lead us home to you. Listen to our prayers and grant our prayers in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please have a seat as we prepare the altar. The song for the preparation of the gifts is in the gather, number 923, table song. for this evening's Mass is for our parish community. Pray, sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memory of the sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. Through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy. For you are the one God living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in, the pre in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them too, we confess your name and exaltation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the Praise, Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets, taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life, and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave you thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, we remember now 
all, all for whom we offer the sacrifice, especially your servant, Francis, our Pope, Oscar, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into our heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Who, him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace, Lord, be us. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you shan't under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
The communion song is in the gather number 966 when love is found. On us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness, make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's see. The youth group will be postponing its planned January event due to the high COVID infections in our community. 
Um, the next event will be ice skating on February 6th. Okay, you got it. February 6th. Go ice skating. All right. Anybody else? Any other young people? No, nope, you're it. You're the young ones, so. All right. And um, parish office will be closed for Martin Luther King Day on Monday. So if you need anything, just give a call or give a call. The Lord be with you. May the peace of Christ, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Go in peace. The closing hymn is in the gathering number 606. Glory and praise to our God.
Thank you. 